Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to wait a couple of minutes as um, the various participants join the session. I can see a number of people already joining, but um, yeah, we're oh, very timely noise now. Um, yeah, let's let's wait for a couple more minutes. Um, in the meantime, as you join, um, if you wanna enter your name in the chat and maybe you know, like, let us know where you're joining us from, um, whether you're an artist, an arts administrator a mural art enthusiast, just, you know, like a cultural worker, like what your connection to mural art is, maybe you don't have any connection and that's okay as well. So yeah, if you can, if you can tell us a little bit about it uh, and pronouns as well. Thank you, Miss. <laughs> that would be great. Can see more and more people joining which is great thank you all so much for spending your wednesday evening with us it's so dark outside already you almost feel like it's like super late in the evening but um yeah thank you much appreciated um that you decided to you know like spend your your time with us today hopefully we're gonna have a really good conversation so I'm going to wait for like another minute and then I'll get into the official remarks because that's going to take a while as well. And um, this way we can allow for more people to join. Okay. Okay, so maybe, you know, I want to be mindful of the time that we all have together today. So um, let's start with the um, official remarks. Um, just see like a couple more people joining. It's where they get settled. Great, perfect. Okay, good, good evening. And um, welcome all to the um, second session of the third day of our 20th National Mural Symposium presented by Mural Roots. Uh, my name is Marta Keller Hernandez, uh, for those of you who don't know me, and I am the Managing Director at Mural Roots. It is truly a pleasure to be with all of you uh, today. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the diversity of the first peoples of this area and recognize the territories of the Huron-Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Today, Toronto is still home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island and around the world. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to work, live and meet on this territory. We also acknowledge the many people of African descent who are not settlers, but whose ancestors were forcibly displaced as part of the transatlantic slave trade brought against their will and made to work on these lands. The National Mural Symposium is a professional development and networking event for mural artists, administrators, and mural producers to teach, learn, share, and explore current trends and challenges in the field of mural art. This National Mural Symposium would not be possible without the generous support of our community partners, Neighborhood Arts Network, and YYC Artists Outlet, sponsors Street Art Toronto, SDS Canada, and RBC, Mural Roots members, and all of you program participants. I would also like to thank our funders, operating funders, in this case, the Toronto Arts Council and the, and the Ontario Arts Council. We are really excited to host this panel discussion titled, Let's Talk Art, Culturally Diverse Aesthetics in Mural Art. In this session, multidisciplinary artists Unem Sharma, Aitak Sorahitalab, and Ksenia Choi 
well presentable their artistic and mural practice, which is influenced by the cultural aesthetics of their home countries. The artists will discuss their experiences as immigrant women producing mural art, the barriers faced, as well as the change needed in order to build more spaces for diverse aesthetics in public art. The session will be moderated by independent curator Claudia Arana. Uh, before I pass on the mic to Ines from Neighborhood Arts Network, I would like to thank Neighborhood Arts Network, specifically you, Ines, for agreeing to be part of our National Mural Symposium, uh, for co-presenting this session, and for providing bursaries for many of our um, you know, like session participants uh, to be here today. Um, and of course, I would also like to thank RBC for their support. Ness, if you want to take it from here. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Marta. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Ines, I go by she, her, and now I am a senior program coordinator at Neighborhood Arts Network, a strategic initiative of Toronto Arts Foundation. At uh, Neighborhood Arts Network, we offer accessible arts programming, awards, and exciting partnership opportunities to Toronto-based artists, arts educators, and arts organizations. And we're very excited that this year we celebrated our 10-year anniversary. Um, I am incredibly fortunate to be part of a team that is, is truly compound of um, change makers and uh, be here with all of you today represented Neighborhood Arts Network. Feel free to connect with me afterwards. I will uh, put my email on the chat. Uh, if you have any questions about how we can support your work as well as your projects. Uh, and uh, before we get started with the very interesting conversation that, that we will be having, um, I have a couple of uh, announcements. Uh, this webinar is being recorded for our archival purposes, and it might also be shared through some of our digital platforms. ASL is being, um, is, is being provided. Uh, by Gaitre Persaud and Marcia Adolf. Thank you very much for being here. Um, in terms of safety, if for whatever reason this event is compromised by someone who is sharing hateful or violent videos or audio, the webinar will be ended, um, um, will be ended and staff will follow up with information about uh, rescheduling or if relevant, sharing uh, the information via email. If you require any technical support, please send Jackie a message on the chat. Um, and also, please pin the ASL interpreter. Um, this can be done with right clicking over the interpreter. Uh, pinning them ensures them that always uh, they're always visible, even when sharing a, um, a screen, uh, or if the speaker is uh, the is the view is toggling. If if um, and I'm going to pass it uh, back to um, to Marta, who's going to present uh, our moderator. Thank you, Ines. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we also have live captions going on, um, so you know, like, feel free to turn that on if if needed. Um, Yes, it's my actual pleasure to introduce Claudia Arana, our moderator for the session today. Um, Claudia Arana is an independent curator, arts administrator, and cultural connector who has installed in her practice the construction of virtual and physical artistic platforms to promote the inclusion of different cultural perspectives. She aims to include socially and politically viable artistic practices through the engagement of physical and digital spaces, exploring notions of memory, race, race, racialization, racialization, is that a right word? <laughs> racialization and global migration. She studied art theory and critical thinking at the School of Visual Arts, as well as advanced critique at the International Center of Photography in New York City. Currently, she is the Artworks TO Cultural Hub Curator for the 2021-2022 Toronto Year of Public Art, and the operations manager at Sur Gallery. Claudia, without further ado, you know, like it's it's all yours. Amazing. Thank you, Marta, for that introduction. And thank you all for being here today. I'm very, very much excited about this conversation. And as we are currently celebrating Toronto's Year of Public Art 2021-2022 and the community behind it, I'm glad that we are that we're here today 
to discuss a pressing and timely uh, conversation about culturally diverse aesthetics in mural art. And not only about the aesthetics per se, but about the artists and their backgrounds and how their experiences as immigrant um, women producing mural art uh, is being uh, something that uh, most of them, um, especially the artists that we have real, right now, uh, they have been able to identify different barriers and challenges that uh, they continue to face. And I think it is very important for us to have this conversation right now and to talk about the inclusion uh, uh, throughout public art. As a newcomer curator, I have focused my practice on socially and political engaged art uh, in supporting artists and striving to deliver meaningful platforms and representation to often overlooked and marginalized artists from diverse backgrounds. From my experience, working with many artists from a wide range of backgrounds, I know we need to have this conversation and address it specifically to the public art realm. So thank you very much, Mural Art and Neighborhood Art, uh, mu mu sorry, sorry, Mural Roots and Neighborhood, Neighborhood Arts Network for uh, holding this space uh, for us to discuss uh, these uh, very important ideas. Uh, that being said, I would like to introduce three amazing artists, Poonam Sharma, Aitak Sorihatalab, and Ksenia Tsoi. Poonam Sharma is a contemporary visual artist and muralist. She grew up in India, where she learned various folk and tribal art forms and explored contemporary styles in Canada through various community art projects. In her murals, she blends in Canada in, sorry. In her murals, she blends various art forms to create a unique expression and enhance the significance of art form pass it through several generations. So Puna, thank you for being here today. Aitak Sorihatalab is a contemporary ceramic artist, researcher, and educator in the arts. As a creative, she narrates life stories, social issues, and political concerns in her sculptural installations using the elements of Iranian and Mesopotamian art, culture, and history. Passionate about social development, ITAC has co-founded a non-profit organization called ARSA to support new Canadians in the arts in Toronto. She, currently, uh, she is currently a PhD candidate in York University, Faculty of Environmental and Urban Change, researching public and environmental art. Hi, uh, ITAC, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Ksenia Tsoi is a new Canadian community-engaged artist originally from Uzbekistan. Whether it's a community, murals, illustration, or cultural production, her work has a distinct social purpose and focuses on diversity and inclusion. As a visual artist, her works are inspired by folk motifs and legends of different cultures that influence her throughout her life. For her as a person of mixed heritage, it is a visual expression of her never-ending exploration of identity and belonging. Okay, so welcome you, uh, all of you. And as I said before, I, I think this is a, a very important moment for us to have this conversation, especially throughout this year with everything that's happening in terms of public art. So without further uh, introductions, I think that we can start uh, by listening to each of you. Uh, all the artists, the panelists have uh, a presentation. And after their presentation, uh, I will be conducting a series of questions for the three of you. And after that, we will be, um, Marta will be moderating a Q&A with the audience. That being said, Poonam, will you like to start? The mic is all yours. Thank you so much, Claudia. Am I audible properly? Thank you. 
So thank you so much, Claudia. Thank you, Mural Roots. I would really start uh, myself for thanking uh, Toronto Art Foundation and Neighborhood Art Network for this amazing uh, conversation, initiating this conversation, which is, as you said, is really much needed on these times, considering uh, Toronto Year of Art, as well as considering like it has been pandemic and uh, there had been a lot of other um, issues that came up during the pandemic that we understood with respect to being an immigrant. So, um, and welcome everyone who has joined. Thank you so much for joining and being part of this uh, conversation. Really appreciate your time. Uh, I would like to share my screen now. Is my screen audible to everyone? Uh, yes. and with you? Looks good, thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, as uh, Claudia uh, introduced me, I am a contemporary folk artist and a muralist. So um, she already gave a little hint about myself. I have included a um, map about India. So I'm from India and this yellow small part in the uh, eastern, uh, western side of uh, India is Rajasthan and that where I came from. So most of my life I spent there, almost uh, like 25 years I've spent there and I've learned a lot of things. So I did architecture degree from a technology institute and uh, I've been working on uh, painting throughout my life. In 2013, I moved to Canada with my family and uh, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but it's the place uh, we, I came from, it's a desert and uh, Canada was totally a different uh, world for me with no one that I knew here. So, and it has become my home now. So I feel proud to uh, feel that I have two homes now and both are loved equally. And I really have a lot of place in my heart for both the places. Here in the pictures I'm showing is uh, me on, starting from the left-hand side, I'm working with some local artisans to understand the various different arts. This specific art is regarding stenciling and it's quite famous on fabric in India. On a left uh, corner side and the now is the latest uh, mural that I did in Burlington. I'll be sharing more details about that. And in the middle, when I'm standing with a lot of uh, women, they are a very, very talented artisans who did blue pottery. And I had a privilege to work with them. Uh, and it was a, a sponsored by Neighborhood Art Network and it was a wonderful experience. On the right corner, I'm sharing about some of the monuments. The Jaipur city itself is called Pink City and it's uh, full of a lot of uh, different monuments. And it is very, very uh, into folk art. So that's the reason of my background that I am very, very inspired by a lot of folk arts. Uh, as Claudia introduced me with uh, learning a lot of folk arts uh, back um, in India, I have learned uh, more than 18 to 20 folk arts uh, from uh, these uh, local artists who have learned through their generations. So they have learned through their parents, their grandparents, and it has passed through the generations. It has not been taught officially in uh, various uh, colleges. However, it's passed through generations. So it's almost uh, many of the arts are dying form, which really uh, touches my heart. And I feel like we should um, conserve them and promote them. Uh, as I'm an artist and I'm immigrant, a woman of color and a mother, I have a nine-year-old son and um, he uh, gives me a lot of encouragement every day. So uh, in this one, um, I wanted to share that uh, as a mural artist, I feel that I have learned that the most important part of being an artist and a muralist is to connect with the, your community. The more connect we have, we, we feel what it represents because every community has a different language of understanding each other. There's a different uh, uh, platform where we connect to each other on mental level. And always I think that a painting belongs to artists. However, a mural does belong to the community, which is only fair because they are the people who represent that and they are the people who actually see it on daily basis. The first uh, mural that I uh, worked with um, 
eight different um, um, artists and they all were from different uh, backgrounds. And as you see, this was a three wave wall and we created a, a river of uh, various art forms uh, fuse with a fusion of various art forms and each circles and everything represent a different art form. So this was my first understanding of Canada as we all came in harmony and we represent the flow and growth what we work every day with each other. And that's how I believe is the best way to communicate. Even though we don't know each other's language, we do have some communication through art where we can share each other's understanding. And I'm very proud of this uh, the project itself because we got to know each other very well. Many of the women didn't even uh, work on mural earlier and they feel um, very, very proud and um, about the work that they did together. Uh, these are the latest um, uh, work that I have been doing in Burlington. I moved to Burlington to, from Toronto to Burlington three years back, and I've been working on um, various um, bell boxes as well as murals here. When I came and I moved, uh, it felt uh, uh, it was a different uh, artistic environment, is what I understand. Uh, and I started with small bell boxes and as I mentioned and I'm showing on the screen, the leftmost is um, based on the Batik folk art form and it has the beauty that I wanted to share about the nighttime, the flora and fauna. So Burlington is, was supposed to be the garden of uh, the gardens in Burlington and there is, has been a lot of uh, agriculture and uh, floral agriculture happened and there are a lot of orchards. So I was, I, I read about the history of the place and I went through the details and that's how I wanted to represent. So here are three of the bell boxes that I created in 2020 and 2021. And they were really take, uh, accepted very beautifully and all the neighborhood and community people were uh, very engaged even during the pandemic. Uh, this is another mural that I worked on uh, and this was one of the biggest mural that I worked uh, long back and this one uh, was selected as TTC um, um, last TTC card that was uh, designed and uh, that really uh, filled my heart and I felt true Canadian when it was selected. So more about this mural is like, I worked with Michael Cameron, he's another lead artist who worked with me and mentored me during this process. And we designed this with the fusion of mutual and Indian folk motifs and natural elements from Cabbage Town. As this was a design for Cabbage Town, there were uh, a lot of uh, community involvement and uh, I always remember the uh, volunteers that we had in this uh, mural because they were more dedicated than anybody could be. And they were uh, coming to help us every day. And we developed so many connections uh, throughout the community, uh, be it kids or uh, the uh, grownups in the um, neighborhood. And, and this is the um, latest mural that I did uh, this summer. And as it uh, shows, it, uh, it is in Burlington. And um, this is uh, very close to my heart as it really um, uh, feels uh, like this really connected me with my uh, uh, new city that I moved on with. And when I started designing that, there were a lot of community consultation that we worked with. And uh, when I started, it was, as, um, as you might have noticed, all my murals are mostly quite colorful and the, um, these uh, kind of colors and uh, uh, I would say vibrance thing is what I felt was missing uh, when I went throughout Burlington and I saw about the public art. So I started designing and even the uh, community um, consultation that we got, everybody wanted to have something really very colorful that pops out and they feel pride. So I really believe this mural to be a symbol of love and pride for all our neighborhood and for the beautiful city of Burlington. This uh, mural was sponsored by La Manza Corporation and uh, um, with um, co help and coordination of mural roads. 
So a um, lot of children, youth and diverse residents from region around the Burlington, they participated in the painting process. We had so much fun and um, we uh, felt, it actually uh, community members felt belonging and ownership for the part of mural they were painting. Many of them came from multiple times and also from multiple different communities. They were various people who um, traveled from Oakville, Milton, all around the Halton area to participate as and when they started knowing about the mural painting process. The colorful uh, design, as I mentioned, Wellington, it was really close to the Wellington community. Here is all a collage of the murals that I have done. And uh, on the first, uh, the first one that is on the left hand corner is a birch mural on a bell box. The second one is an abstract that represents in Indian uh, background. And uh, the third one is uh, a very, um, it was a, a left alone uh, area in the parking and it was very dark. Uh, uh, people were not very comfortable. Uh, I used to live in St. James Town and people were not very comfortable walking around in a dark and lonely area. And here's when uh, we proposed to have a mural here and make it really colorful. And a lot of other community activities are now uh, happening in the same area. And people feel very proud about uh, the environment that has developed after the mural was painted. In the center, the bigger picture number four uh, is the water hoarding project that we did last year. And it was the big, uh, very big uh, mural jam. Uh, and I'm very grateful to be working with a lot of other artists. And this is the piece that I proposed. And the, um, I wanted to share about the, the topic was water. And I wanted to share about the, this is one of the Madhubani art. There's another form of folk art. And I had a contemporary version of it. I'm also dancing with the fishes here. So that's how uh, glad I was after it was painted. Uh, on the uh, um, right hand side, uh, there are a few other murals that I did in St. James Town and also in the corner right is the barrier uh, mural that I did uh, last year as well. And it was again, a big jam of a lot of uh, talented artists that I had worked with. And I feel really uh, glad about that. Uh, here's uh, my contact information. That, that's about me. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Poonam, for sharing your amazing work. And it's impressive what you have been able to do uh, in Toronto, in Burlington. And it's wonderful that we are able to learn a little bit more about your practice and we will have a couple of questions afterwards. Now, Atak, do you want to go next with your presentation? Sure. Um, a few seconds to share my screen. OK. Do you see it? Perfect. So uh, I will be talking about um, ceramic mural or bar relief as a form of public art, um, which uh, is my practice. Uh, ceramic mural is, um, um, or bar relief, is a form of art that you work with clay and uh, bar means low in French and relief means raised work. Um, and um, the work is sort of added or molded clay in a way that is protrudes from the background flat surface. I would like to start with a poem by Molana, uh, known as Rumi in the West. I just uh, read a few sentences of it, uh, which is my manifest of work or even life. My place is the placeless a trace of the traceless, neither body or soul. I belong to the beloved, have seen the two words as one, and the one call to and know, first, last, outer, inner, only that breathe breathing human being. But my presentation includes very briefly um, the aesthetics of my work, the material, 
commissioners, funders, decision makers, the name and recognition, the concept and the venue. This is uh, the city I was born and raised, Tehran. Uh, I share a few slides uh, of the city with you as my background, as a personal and collective memories as source of my work. Now, this is obviously a modern, crowded, polluted <laughs> metropolitan, uh, as any other big cities, um, but it has a good heart of art in it. This is a Mm, uh, 1800, 1700s uh, palace in south of Tehran, and you can see the tile work, the ceramic way, work on the facade of the building. This is the brick relief on the facade, and this is the stone relief in south of Tehran again, belong to 1700s. This is the city I uh, went to university in Shiraz, and this is Persepolis. Police. Um, and you can see it is actually 2,500 years old structure. And this has been a very uh, huge impact on my work. You can see the details of the relief um, on that building. And this is the contemporary uh, art relief art in Tehran's subway. The commissions uh, come from the Tehran Metro uh, company and because it's um, it has low risk uh, of any hazard or fire, it's a very good place to put the ceramic relief in it. There is another commissioners um, or funders of the work. Um, for example, this this work is done um, by a developer. It's commissioned by a developer, the owner of the building. Um, they want it. Um, a certain design, certain, like, as you can see, the um, statements, Arabic statements. Uh, I just composed those design together. I didn't write the calligraphy, for example, but that was what they wanted. But the other type of the work that I would do is um, the um, work that I would design based on the order or the uh, commission. So this is um, 30 by 10 meters uh, ceramic relief on a facade of a building that is a semi-governmental uh, organization in south of Iran by the sea is a port. So as you can see, there are elements of that city, people, this, the Persian Gulf architecture and everything. And I want to uh, mention um, something about the concepts of the work. As um, an Eastern um, artist, I would design right to left. But as a Western reader, you might see it from left to right. So I would put the important elements who are people on the right, but um, maybe some of you read it left to right. So you would see the company's logo <laughs> first. This is a very important aspect of design when you want to work in Canada as an Eastern uh, artist. This is the material and techniques. Um, so we would have the uh, tiles, the fired tiles ready um, with a specific numbering system. We would put them on the floor first and then install them on the facade of the building. I hired uh professional uh, installer uh, to do the work for me and this is today i hired a photographer to do um, some photography on, of the work um, the work is done in 2012 and as you can see it's actually the city is very hot and humid and uh, as you can see the work is still and nothing wrong with it after these years this is the work that I've done in Canada, um, despite of um, people's fear of the winter and in its impact on ceramic work. Ceramic work. Um, this is actually uh, based on a story, an epic story, Mesopotamian epic story, Gilgamesh. In the left, you can see the artifacts, the ancient artifacts that I inspired by. This is Ishtar, the goddess um, 
who is um, looking for originality and identity. And that's why I obsessed with the story. Um, but she faces immortality or temporality. Uh, I mean, she faces temporality instead of immortality. Um, this work has been done four years ago and um, is still okay. Survived four, survived four winters in Canada. Um, I keep telling people that um, the firing temperature is the key on the work. So um, yeah, if you uh, fire it proper, it's nothing wrong with the work. Um, but I understand that specific art forms like this needs um, to fit in a venue, in a place of value and rec um, a place of um, familiarity and experience to be recognized as valuable. And this is, this is worldwide. This is not only Canada. So here is the role of the art or non-art organization to step in to help artists like us to be seen. Uh, it's not on artists' shoulders to step in and um, change the environment because people are not familiar or don't have experience with the work. They have, um, they don't know the value or they cannot recognize the work. Um, as themselves. These are the public um, uh, paintings, mural paintings that I've done. Um, so this is sort of a continuity of my body of work. I shared the Persian or Iranian knowledge, visual knowledge with people in Iranian di diaspora. Um, and I brought uh, that knowledge into new place as a new presence. Um, as you can see, the tile, the original tile is on the right. Um, again, I put it in the right. Um, but I use the design to uh, paint this um, traffic box. It's in Vila del Toronto. And it's been, um, I got very good feedbacks from the community. Again, this is um, a bell box uh, based on tribal Persian rocks design. And this is um, another form of art that I wanted to share with you. It's a public art. It's augmented reality the, funded by Arts Atobico. Um, this is this work. This is the sculpture of Don, the Rhino I Know series. Um, I picked one of them, which is the blue rhino. Uh, its name is the rhino I know, the dreamer. And I augmented with actually the help of a uh, lead artist, I augmented the work in uh, the city of Etobicoke. And um, this is another form of art that um, I believe the art organizations can help artists um, to share their experience with the audience. I just quickly want to mention a study is done in 2019, um, which, uh, which shows the National um, Art Gallery of Canada in Ottawa. The statistics that you see on the left is the white representations uh, alongside the other um, nation, the other races representation in the National Gallery of Canada, the dark green are the whites, and the uh, Art Gallery of Toronto is in the left. In the right, you can see artists of color and white artists, and the dark color is male or male artists, and the light. Um, are the female artists. The writer of the research, um, Anne Diamond, says hiring a BIPOC curator, necessary, it doesn't mean that you, it doesn't lead to more exhibition of that type because of not being explicitly empowered. It means that we need system to do that, basically not uh, necessarily 
um, replacing people. And because also because fear of being perceived as a biased person. So it means that um, it's not uh, able to be done by people winning the system actually to change anything. These are the few um, uh, references that I used and thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Aitak, for sharing your work, which from what I have read in the chat, and I know for a lot of people, ceramic grill is something that it's not uh, like widely known here in Canada, and it's a beautiful form of art and of mural. And thank you for also for sharing uh, the last slide regarding uh, yeah how we definitely need the system to to change right not to just replace people because we really need to the whole parts of the system to be working towards inclusion in a very like very much meaningful way so it's great that you have shared also those to like that data it's really interesting and that would definitely lead to questions uh, right at the end. But before we move into those, Ksenia, do you wanna share your screen and share your presentation with us? Hi everyone, very nice to see you today. Thank you so much for inv inviting me to be here. I will share mine, uh, give me a moment. Uh, just wondering if you can see it. I cannot see your reactions. If you could please, yeah. uh, just, um, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Ksenia Tsoi. I go by K. So please, uh, if you refer to me, please uh, feel free to use that. Um, I am very happy to be here today, and uh, this topic is um, very dear to me um, because all art that I do mostly is um, uh, deeply inspired by my heritage and the, my background, and. Um, I would love, I, I'm very, very happy to be here today. I am uh, born in Uzbekistan uh, and born and raised, but I lived in Korea and China before coming to Canada, which was four years ago. And uh, I must say here that um, it is absolute pleasure to be here today, especially because my uh, journey as an artist uh, started in Toronto and it started thanks to Mural Roots because before coming to Canada, I was not uh, an artist. I used to work in arts administration and I must say here that I am not trained as an artist. Um, my uh, original background is in economics and I have master's degree in public administration, which uh, throughout the presentation, I will elaborate how it also does influence me. The way I approach art uh, is definitely through that lens as well. But again, I never really even painted before coming to Toronto, but it always has been my dream. And uh, as soon as I arrived, which was like in 2018, I saw a course by Mural Roots and I uh, participated in it. And so if ever after that, I started painting murals. My body's work is not as big as two other artists who shared earlier. Uh, I, I'm still figuring it out and exploring, um, but I would be very happy to share again what uh, has been done so far. Um, my uh, slides are mainly just pictures. It's just to kind of uh, be a background for our conversation. Uh, but for example, this one uh, kind of uh, um, explains explains why, very straightforwardly, why I do what I do. I think uh, um, my art is deeply uh, inspired by my personal experiences of an immigrant. Um, as I mentioned, I, I lived in other countries before coming to Canada. And one interesting thing that was like a common experience for me um, is that whenever I would present myself, introduce myself as someone from Uzbekistan, it would be um, either a lack of knowledge about that part of the world, or unfortunately, like people would even uh, would not know where it is, 
or people would have some sort of negative prejudice about that part of the world or about the country, not knowing exactly what it is. But again, somehow having those um, negative uh, thoughts and bias against it uh, from somewhere, where which would they even not be able to pinpoint. This little uh, character in this, um, in this slide uh, is my signature character. It is an Uzbek girl. And that was my first kind of coming out project as an artist, because it really, uh, by many years of kind of that, um, uh, um, oh God, the word discrimination again as being someone from Uzbekistan uh, uh, really was like deeply inherited in me and I kind of want to speak about it uh, publicly. So I first created that Doodle project, which I would be happy to share uh, as a link in the chat later. Uh, um, Punam and Aitak shared about their hometown. So I, I think it would be also lovely just to kind of learn from that link. Um, so it's an Uzbek girl and she is telling the world about Uzbekistan and she kind of also answers the questions. Uh, Q and A, uh, Q, uh, uh, sorry, F and Q. Um, frequently I ask questions about Uzbekistan, uh, what people like where it is and what language do we speak? What do we eat? What do we dress and so and such. Um, this particular um, little mini mural was done in Ottawa as a response to a uh, project which was called Racism is a Pandemic Too. And somehow uh, that was an already an existing work, work of mine, uh, but I thought it's kind of, um, it speaks to that because again, racism has different facets and it's not only based on your skin color, but again, as I find, uh, which was actually very obvious, uh, especially when I lived in East Asia, as from someone from Uzbekistan, that even if you are of the same ethnicity, depending the uh, depending on the place where you come from, you are treated differently. Um, say the person of the same ethnicity who was born in Canada or uh, US or the West, uh, say uh, living in China, would be treated differently than the same person of the same ethnicity, but was who was born in the country of their origin. And so that was uh, very, uh, I was very deeply touched negatively by it. And that was, that is my artistic response. Uh, on this particular uh, mural, um, the girl is kind of, is, uh, I do play with pop culture and the very famous um, icon uh, of uh, Rosie the Reverse striking the pose uh, that we can do it. Uh, but I uh, wrote immigrant in there as, um, as a reminder that immigrants can do it. Uh, I can do it, you can do it. And um, um, I just hope that it's a playful way to kind of uh, also remind the community at large to trust us more. Um, on the back of the uh, box, uh, it is a, an image of uh, Suzani. It's an Uzbek um, or Central Asia, Asian, better to say, Central Asian uh, embroidery of um, a form of art. And uh, it has a very deep meaning um, uh, rooted in Zoroastrian culture. And actually you will find a lot of my images very close to what Aitak shared because we share uh, like common past. Uh, Uzbekistan and Iran uh, share a common uh, past uh, um, in history. Uh, I will just go through slides and just kind of give, an ex uh, give some examples. Uh, here, uh, it was a project by Street Art Toronto and uh, it was a series of uh, uh, cycle barriers, which other two artists also participated in. And uh, this one, for example, features an image of a pomegranate, which is a very um, auspicious uh, symbol in many different cultures, all the way from uh, Mediterranean Sea and all the way to East Asia. And it is very dear image in uh, Uzbekistan uh, as well. Uh, this, uh, uh, this is my son <laughs> uh, modeling uh, in front of my uh, another uh, uh, concrete barriers, uh, which feature um, geometric art form. Uh, this particular um, pattern is from a very famous, I would say, iconic building uh, that represents Uzbekistan, which is in Samarkand. Um, and uh, it, it, it has roots in Islamic uh, artistic tradition because uh, it uh, 
uh, it is prohibited in Islam to um, portray figures of humans or animals because it's believed that only God can create uh, life. So that's why uh, back in the day, artisans and craftsmen had to come up with a way to still create beauty and um, express uh, a deep, uh, um, uh, deep um, thoughts. So for example, uh, with geometric uh, art, um, it is, uh, the meaning behind is that uh, in the continuous repetition of this same, or of a single, or in this case, in, in a few um, geometric shapes, the pattern forms in an endless design and that represents the endlessness and abundance of our universe um, and generosity of the creator. So I think it's just the, uh, there are so many deep concepts that are not talked about. And for me, I really love to bring those into public art because it, again, it is a prompt for a conversation. It is a prompt for intercultural conversation. And people do ask whenever uh, I would find myself painting in the streets. And if it's something super, super cultural and people have not seen that before, what I love the most uh, is that people actually will stop and they would ask, what does it mean? Where is it from? Where are you from? And I love it because I think, again, that's um, uh, why I would do it. And uh, just um, uniting it with what I said earlier about uh, someone facing discrimination on an almost daily basis. I really uh, care to bring Uzbekistan um, into or Central Asia generally into um, context, into positive context to kind of um, to just kind of change the narrative that uh, somehow it is perceived somewhat negatively just even because it is just unknown, but uh, bring it into the conversation into uh, under in the same context with art, um, uh, color, um, and just um, uh, generally like beauty. beauty uh, let's say uh, this is another. It's the same color palette. It was created very close to each other. Uh, these two projects and these. Uh, box uh, features um, iconic ECAT patterns. Uh, perhaps uh, you have seen them sometimes uh, A-list celebrities strike uh, dresses uh, on, you know, runways and it has, these patterns also have made it into uh, interior design as a trend as well. In that photo, um, I wear a dress that actually has the pattern. Um, this particular symbol is a tree of life. It is also, I try to choose symbols that not uh, while they are originated from Uzbekistan um, or like are present in Uzbek culture, I try to find symbols that kind of um, transcend boundaries and can be found in different uh, religions and cultures as well. So for example, Tree of Life is one of those. It can be found uh, in Islam, Christianity, Buddhism. It's something that literally um, transcend cultural uh, cultures and borders. And that's why I like it. Um, well, when I was painting this, I found that so many people actually, especially this one stopped by and they asked about it. Um, also what is uh, what I found also interesting, uh, people different cultural backgrounds sometimes would ask if it was of indigenous meaning. So I think interestingly enough, um, that just is another example how culture and art fuse boundaries between different cultures. And I can see why people would think so because it, in a way that graphic form and that kind of flat um, and uh, uh, graphic flat, fl flat graphics, um, it kind of resembles uh, in a way uh, uh, some indigenous art forms. And again, that's why I think uh, that's the beauty of it. That's the connection. And I find um, that that being another reason to do it. Um, this is uh, kind of same series, and this also these barriers um, also feature ikat patterns. That is like fabric, um, and this particular one it was created in pandemic. It was already second year of pandemic. My son is already one year older than in the <laughs> earlier picture. Um, this one uh, features a symbol of, um, it's called uh, different names, but in the Western world known as a paisley. Uh, it's also known as buta. 
Again, this symbol uh, is found in different uh, cultures around the world. Uh, well, it originates from um, Central and South Asia. Uh, I'm sure Poonam is also aware of it. Um, it also um, I found on many Indian motifs as well, uh, as well, of course, as on Iranian um, and uh, further um, into West Asia. It is a very powerful symbol, and usually uh, it is believed that it uh, brings protection and also luck. And so I felt uh, it is uh, we could use some luck and you know magic in these uh, tough years uh, that are unfortunately still here. So um, again, uh, it was interesting to talk with people and kind of uh, they would ask, "What is that?" Or like, "Oh, I see a carpet here or fabric." So that was cool. People could actually understand where it was coming from. Uh, this is uh, another uh, bell box and it was a special invitational project by uh, initiated by Michael Cavano and Punam actually uh, you also painted one in that particular roster and I'm very thankful to my uh, Michael because he specifically created that project as a um, roster of very multicultural artists coming from different backgrounds uh, because he believes in the diversity of the arts and he's uh, this particular box is near Rome uh, so as uh, and I'm now speaking Michael's wo uh, words uh, that he said I'm super excited for this because it's this um, uh, imagery of eastern uh, civilization uh, being found amidst the western uh, it is literally very close to Rome and University of Toronto featuring uh, Victorian style buildings. So I think that juxtaposition is very cool. And I am very thankful that uh, that art kind of made, um, made it there. And again, uh, it's just, um, uh, and I hope it makes people again think or look it up. Um, this particular one is also inspired by the image of Suzani, the embroidery art. Um, and it features, for example, the image uh, of a sun in the other side, the smaller circular form shape uh, is moon. So um, just to kind of give that cultural reference, a lot of it, uh, a lot of art in Uzbekistan uh, is uh, rooted in Zoroastrianism. I mentioned it earlier, it's a, an ancient religion um, originally um, uh, originated from Iran and uh, the religion uh, worship the sun and the light. So for example, in those, uh, in the art forms that are originated um, from Zoroastrianism, you find a lot of sun, image of sun. So that I find it also a very interesting image that also a very prominent in indigenous culture here. And again, there is some sort of visual resemblance and I find again how um, just amazing it is that cultural connection. Uh, this is another art form, it's kind of different. Um, it is not in public, uh, it's not an outdoors project. It was actually in an Uzbek restaurant in North York, Toronto. But uh, I really uh, was excited to work on this because it's still semi-public <laughs> uh, as long as people do visit and it, it keeps being open in pandemic. Uh, this one features uh, miniature art. Again, it's, it, it does take roots in Iran, but it um, made it into a very kind of a different, not a very different story, but somewhat different. Um, uh, for an uh, art form in Uzbekistan. So it, it's also of Uzbekistan, uh, present day Uzbekistan's own art form as well. Again, you see pomegranates. I love that symbol. I think again, it's very, uh, it's very easy while it has very cultural symbolism and it's uh, just an, an, if an Uzbek person or a person from those areas where pomegranates are, um, have prominent, um, uh, meaning would kind of relate to at the same time it's also just a fruit and uh, of course it um, represents growth and can any person can relate to it so that's why I do love featuring it a lot in my works and this particular um, uh, this couple is a there are actually many couples uh, Romeo, Romeo and Juliet like couple stories uh, fables in uh, our cultures and so it can be literally any of them but I call them Farhat and Shirin um, uh, must be uh, uh, 
uh, so, so sounds very, it must be sounding very similar to ITAC um, now. Here uh, it is, it, it's actually the same restaurant, but I wanted it, it to show that again, there is this Islamic um, art roots in the patterns, but also, and that is interesting actually about Uzbekistan because it's, um, it's literally, if you don't know, it's literally in the middle of Eurasia, it's in between Europe and Asia, and it has been on the crossroads of civilizations for such a long time that we are such a we the Uzbek culture is a is a culture is a fusion of uh, many different cultures. So, for example, um, even uh, in other Islamic buildings uh, around the world, you would never see a representation of an animal uh, because what I said earlier, it was uh, especially back in the day very strictly prohibited, but. In Uzbekistan, and uh, I talk, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, as per my research, even in Iran, where uh, Zoroastrianism originated, uh, you wouldn't find uh, images of uh, uh, animals on 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 um, Islamic buildings, on um, uh, religious buildings. Sorry, but in Uzbekistan, there are quite a few buildings, and this one is one of those most iconic ones, where it fuses both. A roots of Islam and Zoroastrianism, two religions of the area. And you can see this, I have a close up image of the uh, lion. Uh, it looks like a tiger, but actually it's a lion. Um, it's called Sherdor Madrasa. Madrasa is an Islamic institution, educational institution, and it's uh, pretty much a lion madrasa. So you see the image of the sun, and very interestingly, when Poonam shared her murals, and I haven't seen those that mural before, but I saw a very similar image of that uh, sun, that uh, sun face. Um, um, in your work as well. So I find also that's kind of interesting. It uh, goes, uh, uh, it's a fusion of uh, all of our cultures here. So it was kind of a representation of uh, that building. Um, later in time, I must say, I kind of, uh, perhaps it's been maybe uh, two years that I specifically uh, focused on um, heritage from Uzbekistan. Uh, also, I think it was um, dictated because I was, I am an immigrant from Uzbekistan and in Canada, I am known as someone from Uzbekistan, but I shifted into, in my works to something uh, more personal and uh, um, I am uh, a person of mixed heritage. And for example, uh, part of my family is Korean and part of my family is uh, Russian and Crimean, uh, Tatar and German, and all of that uh, cultures and many others actually coexist in present day Uzbekistan. But um, having lived in other countries, coming now to Canada, uh, being married of a uh, two partner who is of Chinese background and uh, uh, heritage, sorry, um, I find uh, this cultural fusion is just part of my daily life and I cannot not also touch uh, that in my work. So very, um, very um, naturally, I kind of switched to fusing those elements in my work. And I guess it's more autobiographical because I started using, I shifted away from patterns, just purely patterns to kind of incorporating humans and well, women. Um, it's not my self portrait, but uh, it's a woman looking somewhat like me. So, uh, or women that I kind of uh, uh, um, paint. Uh, they are looking Asian, but at the same time, they're not uh, fully Asian or quite Asian, or they're also other many different things. So, uh, so I'm kind of exploring that idea right now. These are my very early works in that, um, in that, um, how to say in that um, series. Uh, this one, for example, um, uh, this one was in Ottawa. Th uh, this work is in Ottawa. Um, and it also features multicultural artists. Just my neighbor is an artist from India. Uh, but in this one, um, it's kind of, uh, um, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It's a uh, Asian looking woman, but she wears, those Central Asian pattern uh, uh, clothes, and um, uh, it kind—I of, played it with an image of a peacock because, again, 
peacock is a very a symbolic and very auspicious uh, image in many cultures in the world. And, but at the same time, it reminds of a Slavic headdress, uh, also part of my culture. And so, again, it's a it's an exploration as a person. I kind of uh, it's an ongoing search for identity. And so many times, I'm always told that I'm not this or I'm not that. But at the same time, I'm all of this, and it's kind of uh, confusing to me myself. And I think this is again, this is where I'm at with my art, and this is something that I would love to discuss early uh, later. Sorry, the discussion part um, about. Uh, about um, um, representation of cultures and also cultural appropriation, because I think something what paralyzes me is because one time I was kind of asked questions whether I can represent what I paint. Um, and again, it's such a, a painful question to someone like me who, who again goes on a personal level, uh, yes, what, do, what am I and what can I uh, represent? So I would love to kind of talk about that as well. Uh, that is it. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I uh, go by Alfred Ghani, so it's there. If you would like to connect with me later on social media, I am very responsive and would be happy to answer your questions. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. I hope it wasn't that long, too long. No, that thank was you. perfect. Thank you so much, Ksenia, for sharing your work and also your journey and it's amazing i think we have of course three wonderful artists today that have shared their work and because we do want to move on to exploring a little bit more about uh, this uh, idea or this concept of what are the barriers that uh, new canadians or immigrant artists are facing I'm going to ask two questions uh, to the three of you. And I think that I'm going to do it, this two questions together because probably um, uh, within your uh, answers, you can, in a way, touch upon uh, these two at the same time or not. Like, it's really up to you. But the first question will be, What's been the biggest barrier that you have faced as a new Canadian artist when producing murals or public artworks? And the second question will be, do you think that having a defined aesthetic clearly influenced by your country of origin and its visual quarter can or has become a barrier to be able to be part of a larger scale public art project? So, uh, we're going to keep the same order. So, Puna, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, Claudia, would you request, uh, I would request you to repeat the first question so I should be more precise on what you're looking for. I had a glitch, technical glitch. No problem. So the first question will be, what's been the biggest barrier that you have faced as a new Canadian artist when producing murals or public artworks? Okay, so... Um, I've been very grateful um, being a, a newcomer artist in Canada. So the uh, barrier I would say would be to get a bigger work is what I understand. That first, uh, even though you have worked in a various uh, forms and platforms uh, uh, in uh, your uh, previous country, when, when you move and then you have to prove yourself again. Again, you have to, I feel like we have to, we are rooted from one place and we are again rooted back into a new land. And that really uh, takes a lot of efforts. And also we face challenges because there is a different perspective about understanding the art and understanding what you have already accomplished. And you have to start again by indulging with a new perspective of community who might not understand how your art grows and what it represents. So I would say the communication and the uh, way we uh, get to get involved with the community and with the people is most challenging is what I find. And I do, uh, do um, agree on to what all opportunities have already been given to the uh, newcomer artist is absolutely uh, extraordinary because uh, 
I might had least expectation when I moved, but I have seen that there are lot and lots of opportunities that Toronto Art Foundation, Neighborhood Arts, Mural Roots, all they gave to give you a boost and a, a kickstart to how you work with the community. They help you communicate. They have uh, developed a lot of uh, their programs. As Kazinia said, even I joined Mural Roots to understand and learn about the mural um, art here. And I would say it really helped me. So more like that, more communication, more learning environments are, are required. And, uh, and also how to know about them because you take time to develop a social network, right? to know about where you uh, have just arrived. So I would say that really need a boost uh, is a totally I feel about that. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Poonam. And now I talk, let me know if you need me to repeat the, the two questions. No, thank you. And I think Poonam explained it very well. Um, if I want to brief it in two words, I would say recognition and connection. These are um, the two aspects uh, that we, we miss here, basically, as new Canadian or newcomer artists. But uh, yeah, Poonam explained it very well. That's right. Yeah, and that's something that uh, for me working with uh, many artists that, yeah, that have come uh, to make Canada their home, uh, I think is having that platform, that visibility, right? What we are missing. Ksenia, do you want to also uh, add something else to the conversation? Let me know if you need me to repeat the questions again. If you don't mind, actually, so that I stay on, <laughs> on topic, if you sure. don't mind repeating, please. No problem. So what's been the biggest barrier that you have faced as a new Canadian artist when producing murals or public artworks? And if you think that having a defined aesthetic uh, influence by your country of origin and its visual culture has or uh, can or has become a barrier to be able to be part of a larger scale public art project. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I start from the um, um, last question. I think I must say that um, I have been very thankful to be part of uh, projects like uh, um, I lived in both in Toronto, have lived in both in Toronto and Ottawa and to be included in the project in these two cities. And I find um, uh, I chose cultural aesthetics for the reasons I mentioned earlier, just because it was so important to me to represent uh, my part of the world and kind of like um, start the conversation, but also just as a person, I really love um, ethnic patterns and uh, just generally. But I kind of feel sometimes that maybe perhaps that was also why I could make it um, like straight into a mural art because it is a kind of a hot topic as I would realize uh, later now uh, kind of to showcase diversity, which is great and I'm very thankful. Um, so I think in fact, uh, perhaps it even helped to have a very specific uh, cultural um, influence, uh, but that is my guess. <laughs> that is my assumption. Um, but uh, that is to say that it is still up to certain level because I wouldn't see, again, and it's also my assumption, but I wouldn't see myself being um, or at least I haven't felt that these kind of very specific uh, visuals would be welcome if it was a bigger wall, a bigger project. As in like, I would even doubt, maybe, you know, there are so many other diasporas in Canada and maybe Uzbek diaspora is not the biggest. Do I even have right to take that space? So definitely, like, I would have no problems with that painting little barriers. But do I do again? Do I uh, am I welcome to take bigger space? So that will be on the personal level, but one. And again, I haven't seen a project that said, you know, uh, this is for newcomer artists, or this is uh, this is this huge big wall, and this is for diverse cultural aesthetics. And if it's not mentioned specifically, again, I wouldn't even dare. So I think there is that. And actually, it's more of a question: Are we welcome? Are uh, more specific diasporas, like again, Uzbek <laughs> diaspora, are welcome as much as, for example, much more um, uh, diasporas with much longer history? 
uh, my my answer to this as a human would be yes because everyone belongs here it's now today it's a home for everyone but again uh, but is it so um, and for the second one uh, perhaps this already is an answer in a way uh, so I think maybe it's not more of an, a barrier but more of what I would love to see like a very specific call that kind of also provides that uh, support network to create those works, specific works, but also uh, I must say in this regard about uh, that issue of cultural appropriation. Uh, it is very unclear to me um, in, uh, uh, as, especially as a newcomer, it's a new new word to me and I think it's a, a Canadian context for me. Uh, I have never experienced it before. Uh, like what is it and who has right to paint what and me as a person of mixed heritage or can I paint uh, parts of my like segmented uh, um, identity it paralyzes me especially after that one time when an organizer uh, kind of um, not refused, but they didn't want to go with um, something that, for example, had mal, uh, mal, uh, roots in uh, Islamic tradition, asking whether I have their religion, and I have no religion. And so when I said that, they said, oh, we'll better not do that. And I explained that, well, Islamic art is an art form, and uh, artists can, in fact, it's like on internet, on Wikipedia, that uh, people can do it. Um, but uh, they would feel they would also feel crippled by the being judged for cultural appropriation. So I think there is the big question on my end. Thank you. That's great, Ksenia. And I think that this is uh, a moment to ask those questions, right? I think that having this conversation today and trying to identify which are the barriers and how we can address uh, the current gap is uh, something that we not necessarily are going to solve today, right? And it's not up to you, to any of you, to, to solve or have the answer, rather than uh, I think that it's important to keep these conversations open and um, uh, to be able to identify this in a much broader uh, spectrum, right? And to see where things can improve. That being said, I do have uh, two more questions that I would like to ask, that I will keep doing the same thing, kind of combining the, the two of them. And this is related to opportunities. And if we feel right now, if you feel that offering more opportunities to immigrant or newcomer artists will help address the current gap that we are mentioning. so. When I say the current gap, we're talking about the visibility, right? The recognition that we feel that a newcomer artist really struggled and uh, that kind of need of proving yourself into a new, a new culture, right? To be able to be uh, recognized. So that will be one question. If we are lacking of opportunities, if we need more opportunities um, uh, in terms of grants, in terms of funding, and the other uh, question will be uh, if you think that uh, in order to address this issue uh, there are uh, other ideas or other options that could help uh, uh, you know uh, uh, address the gap so that could be even training for example that's something that we are missing uh, uh, if cross collaboration with uh, more established artists that's something what we are also looking for because we know that uh, artists uh, itself uh, can work sometimes very much on their own, right? And having that lack of connection, uh, and especially right at the beginning when you are in a, in a new country and you don't know a lot of people, uh, having that connection, meeting other artists, like local artists that maybe they have uh, uh, experience doing this and finding those collaborations can help, right? also uh, address this issue so i would like to know your thoughts about uh, this and also specifically um, uh, i would like to start with uh, itac just because i i think that a uh, ceramic mural is something so unique right uh, that i haven't seen in 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 canada or probably there are a few uh, but 
do you think that um, this specific uh, technique uh, will need some sort of I don't know training or or you know in, uh, it will be a training from your part from your end right in order to uh, I don't know have that develop like widely uh, do you have do you think that people will need to learn more about how ceramic murals are being done to be able to actually develop one of these in a in a scale like you have uh, showed us before thank you claudia um yes i think as i uh, mentioned specific art forms need to fit in um, an area of familiarity and experience to be recognized and to be recognized and be valuable in any area in the world. So if, uh, for example, my uh, form of art is not as many as, um, like in Iran, um, my background, you like, how, how can I ex expect people would see it uh, valuable or, you know, recognized? as an art form, uh, the, you know what I think? I think in terms of having an accent in the public art realm, um, you have, we have to have, first of all, researches. What is missing? What is needed? and uh, what are the ways to um, address that. Without any researches, we cannot do the job. Like we can, we, we probably can, but we just touch the surface. Um, so the first thing first, I think, is a re kind of a research. Um, I understand that Toronto um, uh, Art Foundation and Toronto Art Council is doing a lot of work, um, and I really great. I'm really grateful for them. Um, yeah, but but research is needed too. Maybe by educational system, maybe by um, the other organizations um, who are involved in the art scene, uh, like the City of Toronto. Um, and the other question you had was, um, sorry. It was a little, yes, it's okay. It was, uh, related to the opportunities. If we have enough opportunities for, uh, newcomer or immigrant artists at this point, and yeah. if there are other, uh, opportunities, for example, like training or cross collaborations with uh, other artists that might help also like mm -hmm. collaboration. yeah yeah definitely but um i mentioned the research actually because um probably in the research <laughs> um we can find out that my art form is not proper for canada <laughs> you know like it's possible right um but i mean we have to have the answers um I'm tired of going to different places, even the developers, the private sector, or, you know, many where else. And they don't know what to say, or they reject me because they say, well, like they are skeptical about this art form because um, they, 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 they are afraid of doing um, a new thing. Um, they are not very open to uh, welcome, as I said, accent. Um, so, yeah, a research is a need. Um, and the, very, the, the opportunities, of course, there are a lot of opportunities, like by City of Toronto even. Uh, I sat in a jury um, this year. Um, it was a partnership program. Um, which has a lot of big projects in it, but um, I see that not like none of the participants were newcomers, none of them. 
that's because there are not uh, good information circulated in the community. Um, and as Kay mentioned, maybe because we are not fully aware of what is going on in the art scene, how we can apply, how we can get the recognition, how we can, you know, go step by step into um, public art realm. And it is, it is hard when you are new in the environment, it is not easy to find your way. You need the information. You need, you need the different collaboration in the city. Uh, and it's not only Toronto. Um, I recently moved to York region and basically it's very, very low opportunity in York region than Toronto. Um, unfortunately, it's, um, yeah. So that's another aspect of public art. There are even, if you go to the website of the York region municipality, you see public art term and you see there are policies, but there are not a lot of opportunity. I wrote to them, I explained my work and I've done a lot of things, but, um, yeah, again, connection and recognition are the keys here. Yeah, absolutely. I, talk, I definitely hear you. And I think that all of you have uh, brought and touched upon like very important uh, aspects that could definitely help, right, uh, address this situation. But because I want to be mindful, I know that Poonam, uh, uh, you haven't uh, answered the last couple of questions, but I want to be mindful about the time. And we do uh, have uh, people uh, that might be interested also in asking uh, more questions that could be actually related to the ones that uh, I have already mentioned. So Marta, how are we doing with time and how are we doing with questions from the audience? Well, so far we only have one question. Um, and um, I think Ines is going to be sharing that with me, but if I recall correctly, it was a question for Ksenia, and it was around whether you were using stencils when uh, working on the concrete barriers and the work that you showed us. Yes, I answered in the chat as well. I did use a stencil. Oh, okay, thank mm. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. We we have one question, just got in. Um, this is from Stephanie. It says, to the truest point of not enough connections and opportunities with newcomer communities, what would you like to see organizations do to make or develop them? So what, what can change? From an organization perspective, right? Yes. Like, for example, like, uh, um, you know, like an... Um, Art service organization like Neuroboots, for example. Okay. Uh, who wants to go? Ksenia, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think it's also connected to actually your previous question as well, uh, Claudia. Uh, I must say that I think I have made it into mural art thanks to mural rules. It's just I lucked out that that project was a uh, program was there. So, but if I didn't have that, I would not. I would be totally lost in the world of arts in the new country, new city. So I think it's that uh, um, for one, uh, we talked about connection and I agree with ITAC, but uh, if um, uh, local art service organizations could be uh, could do more of um, like regular projects. So you don't wait until the big project by Mueller Roots, but on a regular basis, there would be some sort of like events that would kind of introduce you. And network is key for sure, because it's just, just how it works. Um, so that, and also just to mention uh, mentorship, uh, I find uh, I moved to Canada. It's been only four years for me in Canada, but I lived uh, elsewhere than Uzbekistan. And I was working as an arts administrator. I worked already, already in English. So that kind of, that's why I could apply for grants and get them. But straightforward, if I moved straight from Uzbekistan to Canada, 
I wouldn't be able to do it. For one, my English would not be at the certain level. And second, there is a huge gap. However, Uzbekistan is a beautiful country. We have a huge technological gap and just I wouldn't be able to, you know, come put my application in a nice way so that I get it pretty much. And also I wouldn't know local context. And even that, that I had uh, arts uh, admin background, it wasn't easy for me as well. Like I got total rejections the first two years until I understood what's going on and what, how I can do it. So I think mentorship in terms of connecting artists with a mentor who kind of helped them to uh, um, apply for grants and get the projects done, even just done, because one thing is to get the project. Another thing, you don't know how to do it in Canada. You don't know budgets, you don't know anything, but so that's very important, which I find. I totally agree. And Poonam, yes, be, please feel free to continue the conversation. Go Thank ahead. you, Maria. I would say, because uh, has put it so beautifully, mentorship was going in my mind throughout because uh, actually you are too, truly lost when you arrive in a new country. And it's so much different expectation from an artist in just not artist. The artist has to be a project manager, has to write huge grants. Many artists doesn't even know English which really is a big barrier for them. So I would say simplifying the process, even though there are opportunities, many of them might not be able to apply for that because it has to be simplified for them to begin with, right? And mentorship would work best for that because people like me who have learned from our mistakes and we had a lot of good opportunities and uh, like all these, we were able to avail. So at least we'll be able to share our uh, thought and maybe even though they were trying to do, it might take four hour, four years for them with maybe we are trying to pitch in and being a team, it might come up like within a year, they are feeling more confident and going ahead on their own. So mentorship definitely makes a lot of difference and training, definitely a lot of training is required. And just like mural roots have the training, there should be more trainings, just not in mural art, but to also have sessions like what iTech was showing her art about. It's just not about the mural art or just not about the uh, environment of Canada, like the way projects are in Canada. It should also be about what Kizania or which iTech or what Poonam brings in onto the table. That so session should also be there to discuss about those art forms with the community member. That's how it will be a kind of a fusion, what we really want to have a balance and equity, e equality that we are looking for. Unless we explain ourselves, unless somebody's here to listen about what we are trying to explain, then we cannot uh, share what we are happening. When Attic was showing, I was truly fascinated with the sculptures that were showing and I'm, I'm, I feel like I should work with her and create something as of what from comes from my culture and to her, right? And that's truly Canadian, what I believe, right? So I feel that that's what we are all about and that's what we should represent in art. Can I add something very quickly? Yes, we're running out of time, so quickly, please. Oh, okay, so <laughs> I, um, I um, registered a nonprofit organization back in 2015, um, working with uh, new Canadian artists and um, I just want to say it is really, really, really hard to work as a small, uh, and I know Martin knows it well because we so, somehow started um, an organization at the same time without knowing each other um, and doing the same thing. <laughs> but um, so it's really hard for a new um, newcomer. Uh, even if you have long time experience um, as an art admin or mentor or artist or whatever to in, in a new environment. So um, this is another thing that I would expect to get more um, support from the more established art organizations uh, to work with us, to connect with us and um, to help us because um, these organizations like Ersa and Paralia are uh, uh, newcomer-led organizations. So we can address uh, the difficulties, I believe, uh, better than the others. So. Thanks, Aitak, for those final words. Um, we're at 6.33, so we're a little bit over time. So I think it's um, time to wrap it up. I think Ines has something to share 
um, with, uh, you know, with our uh, symposium, well, I mean, session participants. Um, yeah, so Ines, if you want to take it over from there, and then I'll wrap it up really quickly. Yes, um, I just want to say thank you, everyone, uh, for your incredible comments about, you know, your newcomer experiences. Um, you know, I, I, I am myself, I, I, I recently got my Canadian citizenship, and I have worked with, uh, with newcomers in the past five years, and I think I have been touched by every single uh, person that I have supported, um, and it has been fantastic. So all your comments are very meaningful. I have been taking notes and uh, they will be shared with the rest of my team. So thank you very much. Um, and the thing that I wanted to share is we are going to be uh, hosting a workshop about the intersection of legal rights and public art. We know that there is a lot of questions about that. So that workshop is going to be taking place on December 7th at 6 p.m. And I will be sharing the information uh, with Marta so that she can distribute it to everyone that attended uh, this session. Uh, but we're going to be talking about ownership, intellectual property, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, so I think it will be really, really interesting. And, uh, and I was also uh, asked to briefly uh, do a bit of a push for the Toronto Arts Foundation Awards. They are $10,000. Um, awards for the Breakthrough um, uh, Breakthrough Artist Award and $20,000 for the Arts for Youth Award. Uh, so um, take a look at it. Uh, if you know someone or if you want to uh, nominate yourself, uh, you know, please, please do it. It's a great opportunity and a great, uh, you know, recognition for, for all artists. Um, so yeah, that was it. Thank you, Marta. Thanks so much, Ines, for sharing that. Yeah, I would, we would definitely share about the workshop with uh, participants and like the participants of the larger symposium for sure. That's an interesting topic. I just want to say thank you on behalf of Mirror Roots to ITAC, Claudia, Punam, Ksenia. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Ines, for agreeing to partner on this uh, really amazing panel discussion. It was a really great conversation. It was really great to learn about you know, like the like why you do what you do as artists. And um, that was really outstanding. I really hope that everybody uh, enjoyed. Um, and just all I have to say really is like, um, those of you who are, part, who are part of the symposium, like we're um, having our final day tomorrow. So uh, the session in the morning, um, will start at one. We will be sending out emails as we do every day with reminders. Um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a really nice rest of your evening. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone.